Have you ever wondered, does faith play a part in Star Trek? That's what we'll talk about today. Maybe the blessings of the sun be upon you. Septimus, Star Trek, the original series. Today we're going to talk about Star Trek and whether or not there is faith inside of Star Trek. Now, if there is faith in Star Trek, it was probably bad. And it was probably, if it was good, against the wishes of Gene Roddenberry. Or maybe he relented. Gene Roddenberry was an atheist. His son said that he was as close to an atheist as anyone could possibly get right to his death. Many of the producers saw Star Trek as this opportunity to put away all the childishness and the stupidness of religion because now we're in space. It was an interesting thing because a lot of times people criticize Star Trek because it felt a little non-human. Everyone was pure in motive. And Gene Roddenberry drove a lot of what people thought of as the future. But in a lot of ways, people complained about Star Trek and even science fictions after Star Trek moved away from this concept that it seemed like the Enterprise had no bathrooms, people had no sin, people always were pure heart. But you notice that something happened somewhere, I think it was the fourth season of Star Trek, where people started becoming less perfect. And it seemed, to me at least, that that was because of the death of Gene Roddenberry and other people taking over the entire enterprise, so to speak. So there was religion in there before Roddenberry died, and there was religion afterwards. We will talk a little bit of some of the instances about it. To back up the story a bit, there were science fiction magazines, you know, back in the 30s even, all the way through the 50s. A lot of the publishers of those magazines would reject anything that had any religion at all in it. Because again, there was this idea that this is the future. And the future, of course, wouldn't represent religion. We would have grown out of that by then. And it was even to the point where if you put anything that represented any earth religion, you would be not published. It, you had to go along with the line. So it was thought of that science fiction, because it was the progress of humanity, should not include religion all the way back from that time. And again, because Gene Roddenberry and the people he hired had such ill feelings towards religion, many times when you see Star Trek, the original series or even after it, it was portrayed very negatively. You saw the one episode where there was Apollo, the god, and they were just aliens who had not special powers, but high technology, and they seeded the entire universe because they had technology that allowed them to do it. There was even the Star Trek Undiscovered Country, where at the center of the universe, they find what they consider to be God. And when this God wanted a spaceship and Kirk asked the question, why does God need a spaceship? That's a good question, because if it was truly God, God doesn't need a spaceship at all. So I looked at that. And this was when I was an atheist. And I thought, wow, that is really disparaging of people's faith. And I didn't, again, want to see people's faith disparaged just because you didn't agree with that. It wasn't something that struck me as being fair play. But then we see that there was a couple of episodes, and I think this was probably Nichelle Nichols, because if you didn't know this, she was a devout Christian. She was very outspoken about her faith. Yet, what was interesting about it is when she died, you heard about how she was an activist, that she did this and she did that. But most biographies completely left out the fact that she was also deeply faithful Christian. Bread and Circuses, which is where I'm going to primarily talk about the original series, wasn't almost a request of hers because it was so against what most of the people inside of Star Trek really cared about. There were some very slim mentions of it in Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Someone had a copy of the Gutenberg Bible as a rare possession. There was mention every once in a while during wedding services and funerals about touching on faith, but not really getting there at all. But in this episode about bread and circuses, essentially what we come upon is this Roman recreation of a civilization. Someone polluted a civilization by bringing ideas from the outside. And the people who were prisoners and put in as gladiators were calling about the worship of the sun and may the sun bless you. 
And it goes all the way through this particular piece. And obviously, people who are being persecuted by these space Romans were kind people, generous people, people who took care of each other and took care of other people. So these were the good guys in the show. In fact, there were some quotes that Coy says, Captain, I see that you reports Flavius was killed. I'm sorry. I liked that huge sun worshiper, S-U-N. And Spock says, well, I wish I could have examined that belief more closely. It seems illogical. From a sun worshiper point of view, to develop a philosophy of total brotherhood, sun worship is usually a primitive superstition religion. You know, going back to the ancient Greeks, the ancient Romans, you know, all ancient religions had some form of sun worship. Then Ahura, which is also why I think that this was possibly her influence on Gene Roddenberry. She maybe signed some sort of a deal with him. And she says, I'm afraid you have it all wrong, Mr. Spock. All of you. I've been monitoring some of their old style radio waves. The Empire spokesman was trying to ridicule their religion, but he couldn't. Don't you understand? It's not the sun up in the sky. It's the son of God. And then Kirk says, Caesar and Christ, they had them both. And the word is spreading only now. McCoy says, a philosophy of total love, total brotherhood. Spock concludes, it will replace the imperial Rome, but it'll happen in their 20th century. Kirk says, wouldn't it be something to watch, to be a part of? to see it happen all over again. So watching and witnessing Jesus coming back into the world, into this new world, was something that they were envying, something they hoped to see. In a conversation with Flavius, who before he died, they were talking to him, and Flavius says, we'll have to wait here till dark. And Kirk says, are you a slave, Flavius? And Flavius says, You are barbarians indeed not to know of Flavius Maximus. For seven years, I was the most successful gladiator in this province. So Kirk says, so then you heard the word of the sun, still thinking that we're talking about the sun up in the sky. And Flavius says, yes, words of peace and freedom. It wasn't easy for me to believe. I was trained to fight. The words are true. And so Kirk didn't understand it and said, there are many things I'd like to know. There were other times when faith was mentioned. Christopher Pike in Star Trek Discovery mentioned his father studied religion as well as science and somehow thought that that was maybe a weird combination. It's funny. I like science. I'm faithful to God. I don't see a conflict. It's to me like how you see painting is talking about what something looks like. Recording it is what it sounds like. Science is how did it get here? And God is who made it happen and why did it happen? So even though they think that it was contradictory and maybe it was a little bit of a sideways glance at previous Star Treks, I don't find it contradictory at all. And even then in Deep Space Nine, there was a lot of talk about the Bajorans and their faith. There were a lot of people who were of a faith, including Council of Troy, if I believe, but most of the Bajorans Most of the people they met, uh, certainly the Klingon faith was there. Chief O'Brien in Next Generation said that he was Catholic and attends Mass. And even Captain Janeway mentions in the Omega Directive that the Omega molecule is, quote, a forbidden fruit that could destroy us all. So even though maybe she wasn't faithful, the terms were still around. I never understood why Star Trek other than the fact that Gene Roddenberry wanted it so, took humanity right out of almost everything that could have been human. In the Omega Glory, Captain Kirk finds a planet that have a constitution, a preamble, and they considered it to be a corrupted version of the Bible. So again, the language is still out there. There was even a comment that Jason Isaacs, who was in Star Trek Discovery, played the very first captain in the episodes, the starting of the show, Lorca, He was also in Harry Potter. He was looking at the dialogue and was approached for a comment he said, for God's sakes. And they said, well, wait a minute, I can't say that. And they're like, no, you can't say it. And essentially, he's saying that he could say the swear word version of it, 
but he's not allowed to say the non-swear word version of God. So that was more acceptable. But again, like I said, Roddenberry, um, Ron Moore, a lot of the people involved in Star Trek just saw it as being outside of everything. But it wasn't just religion that was outside of everything. There was this interesting conversation where a lot of the writers and people that were involved in Star Trek and knew Roddenberry ended up moving to the television show, The Orville. And The Orville had this episode where someone from their ship committed what that planet thought was a crime. In order to be punished for the crime, they didn't have punishments per se. What they did is they wiped the person's entire memory. Obviously, you're some kind of a bad influence. Something went wrong. And they wiped the person's memory and put them back in as a upstanding member of civilization. And someone asked him where they got that idea of that particular episode of the show. And at one point, Riker in Star Trek Next Generation was supposed to have a lawyer because he was accused of a crime. And Roddenberry's like, no, 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 there's no lawyers in the Star Trek future. We've come past that. So not only is religion gone, lawyers are gone, too. They said, well, wait a minute. Well, what happens in this kind of a situation where there's a misunderstanding, someone set up as a criminal, someone needs defense? So then Roddenberry said, well, if someone was found to be part of a crime, we would do something like re-educate him, wipe his memory, and turn him into a proper citizen. We wouldn't have jails. We wouldn't have laws. We wouldn't have lawyers. And they thought that was so creepy that we would just wipe people's memories for being thought criminals or criminal criminals. They produced a whole show on the Orville about this play out of how Roddenberry saw the perfect world. So it wasn't even just faith that took a hit with Roddenberry. A lot of things did. And to be honest, I think Star Trek got better more recently and afterwards, where things weren't so black and white with everything. The funny thing is, is that if we go to space, faith will be a part of it. If we find aliens, faith will be a part of that too. I have no concerns about it at all. I think God is the God of the universe. Even C.S. Lewis talked about this future when we would eventually meet aliens. He says, quote, I look forward with horror to contact with other inhabited planets. If there are such, we would only transport them and all of our sins, all our acquisitiveness, and establish a new colonialism. I can't bear to think of it. But if we on earth were to get right with God, of course that would all change. Once we find our spiritual awakening, we can go to outer space and take good things with us. And that was an interview by Sherwood Witt in a document called Cross Examinations and is published in his essays, God in the Docks. I have no doubt that faith will be a part of the future, will be part of what we consider to be science fiction. And to me, when you have people like Star Trek started out being, it's so sterile, it's so non-human, that in a lot of ways, it's hard to imagine that all these things that it decided were gone from civilization are suddenly going to go away. I know they wish they would go away, some people, but it's not going to go away. And there will be people of faith until the end of time. So to go out back about Nichelle Nichols, and like I said, there were so few people in Star Trek that were very open about their faith. She was born again Christian. She prayed for people openly. And she posted this story about celebrity evangelist Dylan Novak. He says, quote, I met Ms. Nichols in 2016, and she was emotionally moved by a gift I had for her. Novak wrote about sharing Jesus with the actors. She told me, no fan has ever cared for my eternal life before. And then she went on to tell him about her faith, her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He wrote, quote, after she died, I'm saddened by the news of Nichelle Nichols passing away, but I'm thankful to know where she put her faith and trust. I met Miss Nichols in 2016, and she was very emotionally moved by the gift I had for her. She told me no fan has cared about my eternal salvation before. She went on to share her testimony of the coming to know Jesus as her personal Lord and Savior. She asked me if I were going to share Jesus with William Shatner, who was at Comic-Con, and I told her I was. She handed me $100 and said, it's on me. 
go show him Jesus' love. After leaving Mr. Shatner's line, which was right next to hers, she clapped, asked me how he responded, and told me that she would start praying for him more. Shatner is such an interesting guy. Again, I think he was my very first crush when I was a kid. But he recently went up into space and wrote a biography, Boldly Go. And what he said, quote, in his book and to CNN, when I got to space, I wanted to get to the window to see what was out there. I looked at the blackness of space. There was no dazzling lights, just a palatable blackness. I believe I saw death. Even when he finally did get to go to space, all he saw out there was death. And when he looked to Earth, he saw life. He was also sad that we're killing everything. I do think that as we see science fiction grow and mature, we'll see faith in there too. If we want to appeal to people, every kind of people, we're going to have to include people of faith in the future. I have no doubt that God of the universe is the God of the entire universe and will be known everywhere. So my challenge to you is think about other places in entertainment where you have seen faith mentioned. Was it good? Was it bad? Can you think of other places where faith was mentioned positively? While you're thinking about faith inside of entertainment, is there a way we can start having an impact on culture again? All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember that you can email me at jill at smallstepswithgod.com. And you're welcome to send prayer requests or what you think of the podcast. If you have disagreements, agreements, if you had another interesting point, you saw something else in science fiction that had to do with faith, let me know. And remember, the step to boldly go into the future begins with small steps. Small steps.